Since 2012 until now, we have done a series of projects on gender and trade in Latin America. The first one was between 2012 and 2013, and we looked at the export promotion programs of Colombia and Peru in the context of the free trade agreements that these two countries have with Canada. We looked specifically at how they can integrate gender considerations better into the planning and implementations of these export promotion initiatives. We started up with an analysis of the free trade agreements themselves, or FTAs, where we looked at the new export opportunities that Canada was providing to these countries with new trade concessions, particularly in industries and sectors that we knew were heavy employers of women and had numerous female business owners or managers. We found that although governments at the national and local level had strong interest to include women better in their export promotion strategies, there were no systematic schemes to do so. They were just initiatives here and there uh, without any sufficient scale and without much learning from each other. Besides, there was a very significant problem with lack of baseline data and promotional programming. Uh, that the promotion programming was often gender blind, thus handicapping women participation in their activities. Concrete recommendations were given for the governments and the private initiatives to better use the trade concessions granted through the free trade agreements, particularly in terms of gender equality. Concrete recommendations were given for the governments and the private initiatives to better use the trade concessions granted through the free trade agreements, particularly in terms of gender equality. Between 2013 and 2015, we did a coffee and gender project, working with the Coffee Growers Federation of Colombia that had been developing already a series of social policy programming for its over half million members, coffee growing families across the country. We developed a baseline study of gender issues that was required to improve those policies and support the changing demographics of the coffee sector, where increasingly more female and female-headed households are producing coffee. During the project, our partners from the Universidad de los Andes and ourselves found a number of issues that relate to how women participate in commodity production chains for exports. The constraints facing women in those agricultural exporting sectors were that they had limited access to credit, extension services, and market information. And female farmers often had less access to other labor. If they had the same access, they could have been as much as 20 or 30 percent more productive than farms uh, worked by men, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN. Women also face time constraints due to their various other family and childcare responsibilities. Another set of challenges facing women is that women are often disconnected from actors in the higher end of the value chain, for example, buyers in importing countries, by way of too many middlemen and other elements that monopolize a share of the crop profits. Um, fewer opportunities are available to women than for men to attend trade fairs, business travel, due to traditional gender stereotypes and childcare obligations. Coffee uh, Federation in Colombia and the International Alliance of Women in Coffee have been trying to address this with new uh, innovative ways of bringing women to trade fairs. Lack of representation, finally, of women in producer associations means that the association programs are often gender blind. And, however, the federations gender policy initiative aims to address this, having some difficulties along the line, along the process. Significant urban and rural split exist in terms of opportunities for women in Colombia and Peru, with many are educated urban women having excellent opportunities in international trade. However, rural and poor women are not benefiting in the same ways.